Hello everyone, in this video we're going to talk about compass bearing problems which is a type of question in measurement and data. In particular we're going to be focusing on a topic all about angles. So angles in compass bearing questions will focus on the number of degrees to solve the question. We'll be able to manipulate angles and comprehend the degrees in a full revolution. Six common types of angles are shown below. Understanding manipulation of angles will allow us to easily answer the question. Questions may also use terms such as a half turn, which refer to half a revolution, or making a straight angle from where the person was originally positioned. More complex questions could provide information regarding the amount of degrees turned and will need to, to deconstruct the question in order to understand it. So, uh, angle related compass bearing questions will typically involve around the needle of a compass turning around, well not necessarily a compass but using the cardinal directions which is our north, east, south and west to figure out the how much something or someone has turned around. And we can label exactly how much they've turned by using these terms shown here. So depending on the amount of turning that the uh, object or person does, they are given different specific names. If your angle is less than 90 degrees, you're called an acute angle. If you're exactly 90 degrees, it is called a right angle. Bigger than 90 degrees and smaller than... Uh, let's actually say this angle is theta, which is just the Greek letter that is very commonly used to describe angles. Theta is going to be less than 180 degrees, but more than 90 degrees. In a straight angle, the angle has to be exactly 180 degrees. And for our reflex angles, the degree has to be less than 270 but more than to a 180. Finally, the last type of angle is called the revolution, which means that you have turned 360 degrees to end up exactly where you started off with, hence the name complete rotation. Let's also give it its other name, revolution, just to make things clear. Now that's because often questions may describe scenarios in terms of how many partial or full revolutions something has taken. So we saw in the description half revolutions or half turns can be oftentimes described. So all this means is that we need to be familiar with how angles will look like on a compass. And to do that, I always kind of draw upon the never eat soggy wheat bix statement. And that's just a way to really quickly and easily remember uh, the order of which you draw your compass. So you draw up the cross and always start off from the top. So you write down the N from never, then you go in a clockwise direction and fill in the, the rest of the direction. So never eat soggy wheat bix is just a fun mnemonic that helps you remember where the directions point in. It's much easier to remember something funny and short rather than memorizing which direction all these directions point towards. So the other most important thing I think needs to be mentioned is just how important it is to draw out a diagram for these types of questions. Being able to physically see in what direction we're working with is going to be just so much easier when we try incomplete questions and also reduces the chance that we have some sort of mistake because it allows us to visually see what's going on. So without further ado, let's try out this example question and see if we can put our techniques to, to the test. Uh, 
So here we see a question where Alex is practicing his pirouettes, where he continuously spins in a clockwise direction. His original position, he is facing east. His first spin results in two full circles and a half of revolution. In his second spin, he improves from his first by a quarter of a turn, and in his third, he completes 3.5 revolutions. What is the smallest angle he must turn, either clockwise or counterclockwise, to face his original position? Okay, so that is a lot of information. So again, let's start off by drawing out our diagram. So the first step would always be to draw out the compass directions. So again, using our handy mnemonic, never eat soggy Weet-Bix, we fill in the directions of the compass. Now, starting off, we are told that Alex is actually facing east. So let's make note of that. Okay, so first of all, he spins two full circles and half a revolution. Now, think about this. If you spin in one full circle, you are back to where you started. So the fact that he spun twice uh, doesn't actually make any impact on the final position of Alex spinning. However, the half of revolution definitely does impact his later position. So Alex starts off east and spins one, two times fully and then spins half a revolution uh, more. So half a revolution, we know that one full revolution is equal to 360 degrees. So half a revolution must equal 180 degrees. So starting off from east, after the two and a half revolutions, he is now facing west. So let's draw out his trajectory like this. Now, for the second spin, we are told he improves from his first by a quarter of a turn. So he has spun one, two times and then another half times. However, after that, he also improves by a quarter of a turn. So this is the first step and the second step actually has him facing south. Finally, his third turn completes 3.5 revolutions. So once again, it doesn't matter that he turns three times fully. What does matter is he turned a half time more than that. So his last uh, turn leads him to now face north. Okay, so the question was, in what direction does he need to turn to face his original direction? If he's facing north after all his spinning and he was originally facing east, it's quite clear that the, cl the closest or smallest angle is going to be this one. So that is exactly 90 degrees since each of the four quadrants of the revolution splits up exactly into 90. The correct answer is going to be option A. Okay, so from this question, we saw how important it was to draw out a diagram and visualize what's going on. Even if Alex has spun a bunch of times, the only times the spinning actually had an impact on his direction were only parts of the revolution. So drawing that out allowed us to really visualize what's going on and make sure that we don't make any mistakes when we tackle the question. Other things that were important was the knowledge of how partial revolutions work. So hopefully all of those things would be some things to take into consideration when you do angles related questions in the future. Thank you everyone so much for listening.